U.S. officials are now confirming that Israel was responsible for the bombing of an Iranian weapons depot in Iraq last month. There have been at least three similar explosions in the past month at Iraqi Shiite militia bases, allegedly backed by Iran. The announcement comes just one day after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel's military was operating on multiple fronts against Iran. To discuss, let's bring in Middle East analyst Thane Rosenbaum. Thane, welcome. Iraq is not a neighboring country to Israel, but nevertheless, we shouldn't really be surprised that Israel is allegedly able to operate there and gather intelligence. What is quite surprising, though, about the story is that U.S. officials are talking to the media about it, pointing to Israel. Why would they do that? It's an interesting question. Uh, one of the reasons is because the, we're in a Cold War right now, the United States with Iran, and this r introduces the idea that the uh, United States is not alone, that Israel is its proxy, and that it can rely on Israel to take, Israel to take out these weapons, uh, cash and, and warehousing of weapons and munitions. And so that's the only reason I can imagine that they would be so open up front. Normally, as you're quite right, the Israelis like to keep these things under wrap. Well, another option here is that, you know, Pentagon officials are not so happy about the idea of Israel attacking in Iraq because this might jeopardize the American military presence there. That's true, except for one thing. Uh, it's not just the presence. It's the idea that the Shiites have a connection to Iran. And the real more, more important point is in terms of the overall stability of Iraq, to make sure that it remains not in the orbit of Iran and it is a, a still a Sunni majority country. What's Iran's plan for Iraq? How are you reading this? Well, look, you know, it's a great buffer for them, right? They've been trying to create a corridor through Syria and Lebanon to get to its various proxies, and they have been successful in doing so. Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hezbollah paramilitary groups operating out of Syria, and of course in Yemen. Uh, what's the other country that's in between those countries? Iraq. So it creates a big buffer for them. It's a protection for them. Uh, I don't know to the extent to which whether their ambitions are to, to sort of to, to function there in the same way they function in Lebanon. I don't know if they can accomplish the same thing. But they have a strategic military interest to have that buffer. Why isn't the Iraqi government doing something against these Shiite militias operating within their territory? Secretary Pompeo, for example, earlier uh, in, in the past, he showed the Iraqi government evidence that these Shiite militias are also using Iraqi uh, bases to store their weapons. Ten-year war between Iraq and Iran. Somehow That's the answer. People somehow forgot that that happened. Now, how is it possible that Iraq now can end up as an ally? Look, you know, the, the Middle East and Persian Gulf, they're, un, they're unstable countries, and that we keep forgetting that all of them, to some extent, are failed, unstable states. And so here's yet another example of a state that is divided between Sudis and Shiites. Shiites still have some influence in mm -hmm. the country, and Shiites with weapons is always dangerous for Israel. Thane Rosenbaum, thank you as always.